Uh-oh. <laughs> Things are not looking good for starters. But that's just our desktop, right? Remember, our files are safe in the documents folder based on controlled folder access. Oh, wait, no. Windows Defender has historically not been amazing at blocking ransomware, but one of the core capabilities it does introduce is ransomware protection. So if you open this up, you can see one of the main components that's part of this protection is the controlled folder access. And this allows you to protect your files and folders from any kind of unauthorized modification. Some people say it's really annoying, but at least it is a safeguard against ransomware just running rampant through your system and encrypting all your documents. However, it seems unfortunately to be very easy to bypass. And that's what we're going to show in today's test. So as you can see, our documents are indeed protected under this feature by Windows ransomware protection. And if we go ahead and check our documents, you can see that we have all the plays of Shakespeare in both PDF and text format. And we will see what their fate is going to be. Will all swell indeed and well. Now the sample we have on the desktop is what I would call a ransomware simulation. So we're just gonna run this and see what happens, shall we? Uh-oh. <laughs> Things are not looking good for starters, but that's just our desktop, right? Remember, our files are safe in the documents folder based on controlled folder access. Oh, wait, no, they have also all been encrypted completely bypassing the protected folders feature, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So we do have ransomware protection CFA turned on and we did set our documents as the protected folders, but despite all of that, the sample was able to bypass it and encrypt our data. In a moment, I'll show you how. So here we have an analysis of our sample on VMRay. Thank you to them for sponsoring our channel and providing us with access to their platform. Now, as you can see, the sample starts and when it executes, it creates a sub process that links through explorer.exe, which is obviously what you use to open and modify files. So that's what's uh, running here. It's the Windows process that's responsible for basic navigation, file operations, that's how files get opened and closed. But this ransomware uses that as a technique to bypass controlled folder access. As you can see, when it starts, we first have the process execute followed by explore.exe, and then you have the actual attack payload that's deployed. Now, if we click on this, we can see all the um, file modifications that have been carried out inside the dynamic analysis of VMRay. <laughs> as you can see, this is a long list and we have the full uh, details of what it's doing. So it's a generic file write operation and it's rewriting everything in the documents folder, which is the same behavior we saw in our virtual machine. Now, of course, uh, if we take a look at the overview, this sample was created 18 hours ago. It's classified as malicious downloader injector ransomware. But if you watch my last video about varst toll detections, you will see that this same file was not detected by most engines when it was made. It was detected subsequently. When it was out there, researchers had a chance to write signatures for it. What's also interesting about this particular sample is not only does it encrypt the data, it performs whole array of ransomware behavior, including inhibiting system recovery, using VSS admin to delete shadow copies, using a remote C2, all of that. So it's a really realistic example of what a ransomware would do. Now, in the latest versions of Windows Defender, um, if it's updated, they do now have a signature for it, but that can again easily be bypassed by obfuscation, something I talked about in the last video. But what's important to note here is the ability to bypass CFA using a trusted Windows process. So I'm curious to see if Microsoft uh, will fix this, what the response to this is going to be. So if you're a security engineer from Microsoft, please let me know if I can be of any help in uh, understanding this issue. This was actually discovered by a member of our Discord community, which you can join using the link in description. And for ages, um, I've always said that if you are using Windows Defender, you should always use the uh, controlled folder access feature because there's not a lot of behavioral protection on the system with Windows Defender. It relies a lot on cloud signatures. And CFA really has been one of the few areas where they do have some kind of on-system behavioral protection in the sense that outside applications can't encrypt your files. But as you can see, even that is not 
bulletproof and there are ways to bypass it. Now, another contention a lot of people have with such tests um, is the fact that I'm doing this on admin account and I could technically just allow anything to run. But important point there is most ransomware will run as admin anyway in a realistic situation. And there should be controls in terms of behaviorally how any changes or exclusions are made because if an application based on one click can just go in the background and <laughs> remove all your protection, it's it's not a very resilient system in my opinion but let me know your thoughts in the comments below did this surprise you did this shock you to discover that cfa is not really they could be bypassed by ransomware by simply making it look like the encryption is being done via a trusted process would love to hear your thoughts and if you're interested in cybersecurity, definitely subscribe to the pc security channel and like and share this video if you enjoyed it and i also want to talk a little bit more about vmray who's the sponsor of this video what makes them quite unique is there a customer custom sandbox that can be used specifically for your environment. And when you decide to analyze something, you have a lot of options in terms of how you want to analyze it. You can also interact with it live using their dynamic analysis feature. So I could manually click on something if that was necessary in order to complete the analysis. So it's a lot more like actually running the sample yourself in a virtual machine. But it can also be fully automated and you have the option to run things in Windows 11. And you can also keep the fault private if that is necessary. And as you can see, the analysis is quite thorough. So do check them out using the link in description if this looks interesting to you. And thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.